people. How we grow. Um, spiritual disciplines are how God changes us. He changes us in through many channels, but spiritual disciplines are one of the principal ways He changes us and grows us. Just a thought as we begin this week's class, in which we will be doing some um, interactive things as well, but just a reminder that spiritual growth is the purpose of the disciplines. They're not just to be practiced for their own sake. In other words, things like fasting, if you take that one on, we're not doing fasting to lose weight. <laughs> if you want to lose weight, there are good ways to do that, but the purpose of fasting as a spiritual discipline is not to lose weight. It's not a way, there's other spiritual disciplines are not ways to just manage our anger or our anxiety. Those, those, those they may be byproducts of developing and growing spiritually, but that's not the point exactly. They're ways of getting us closer to God. That's what it's really all about. Getting closer to God, understanding Him better, having a more authentic relationship, a more intimate relationship, and in many ways, really, I think, a more satisfying relationship. That, that thing where Jesus talked about having life to the full, I believe, comes through the spiritual disciplines, at least in part. It's part of that. Jesus is ultimately the focus, not the disciplines themselves. They're the ways that we communicate with God more deeply and get deeper with Him. Now, I thought I'd introduce you to some mice. Um, just as an inspiration for those of you who've chosen the silence uh, spiritual discipline, I thought I'd give you this bit of inspiration. If you practice the silence discipline, your brain will grow. Some uh, scientists at Duke University did a study where they were trying to prove that mothers and babies being in good connection with one another would make uh, the, the children's brain cells grow or something like that. They were doing some experiment with babies and mothers, were well, baby mice and adult mother uh, mice. And they had a control group. So they had one group where the, the mice could hear their babies, the mothers could hear the babies and vice versa. And then they had a control group where there was separation and in fact silence. And they expected to find that the mice that could hear each other, the mothers and babies, that that would actually stimulate the growth physically but also um, in brain cells of the babies. But they actually discovered it was the ones in silence that actually had their brains grow, which is a very strange thing. And I'm sure a vet could explain that. Yeah, of course. Uh, that's another class for next week yes. to explain that. I don't, I, I don't know. Two hours of silence per day prompted cell development in the hippocampus, the brain region related to the formation of memory and involving the senses. So that works for mice. Maybe it works for us. Silence has a way of growing us. And it's counterintuitive in many ways. But it does. I've got a, a link to the particular uh, study if you want to know more about it. Greg McCowan said this from the book uh, Essentialism. By abolishing any chance of being bored, we have also lost the time we used to have to think and process. It's seen as a bad thing to be bored, but actually silence can be very creative, as can all the spiritual disciplines. And giving us that space emotionally, physically, and with our senses to think and to process not just what we're feeling and thinking, but to process what God is doing. What is he doing in my life? Why is he allowing these things in my life? And how am I reacting? In a Christ-like way? Growing and cooperating with God and the Holy Spirit? Or fighting against what he's planning in my life? We need, in that sense, I think sometimes, to be a little bored. Jesus seemed to value the spiritual disciplines. Very early in the morning, while it was still dark, Jesus got up, left the house, and went off to a solitary place. We presume that that was a silent place where he prayed. Simon and his companions went to look for him, and when they found him, they exclaimed, everyone is looking for you. 
And I love this example of Jesus. He is devoted to spiritual discipline, to finding a place of solitude and of silence where he can just be alone. And he inconveniences people to do it. Other people want him. You could say that he was inconveniencing other people. They had to go search and look for him. They didn't even know where he went. He had other people that wanted him and in fact in some ways needed him. There were people surely that needed healing. But still, Jesus prioritized the spiritual discipline of finding solitude and silence to be with God. And of course, it was a habit of his. Luke 5. The news spread about him spread all the more so that crowds of people came to hear him and to be healed of their sicknesses. But, there's a but there. But, Jesus often withdrew to lonely places. Again, the lonely places being places presumably of solitude and silence. If Jesus needed that time to process what was going on and to hear the voice of his Father... And just to strengthen him for the work that he had. How much more we do to get away from what is busy, from what seems urgent, what seems like it needs our attention, but actually to focus our attention upon God. And it's about him more than about the spiritual disciplines themselves. We have Jesus as our example. So what we're going to do for the next few minutes is I would like us to do this as a, a bit of a chat thing. I'd like us to break into the six groups according to the spiritual disciplines that we're focusing on in this series, the six of them. And so we'll have six groups around the room. And if you could gather with others who are doing, focusing on the same spiritual discipline as you, then that will be helpful. And I'll put up a question in a minute for us to be discussing. Two questions, in fact. Now, if you haven't chosen a spiritual discipline, then join the smallest group. <laughs> and you can just join in with that group and have a discussion about these things. Okay, so we're going to move our chairs and do that. And the questions that we will be doing, uh, thinking about for the next 10 minutes, are these two. The spiritual discipline that you've chosen, what is the spiritual benefit of that discipline? If it's confession or celebration or fellowship, whatever it is, what's the spiritual benefit of practicing that to you? And secondly, an interesting question, I think, what does it cost to practice that discipline? Those two questions. Can you be discussing that for 10 minutes and then we'll have a little bit of sharing and I've got okay. some things to wrap up with, okay? So can we find each other? Where's, tell you what, who's doing um, confession? Confess yourself. Okay, confess. All right, there's one. Anybody else? Okay, so Angela and anybody who doesn't have anything. All right, that's good. All right. Who's doing fellowship? I'm doing fellowship. Me and Cherie. Okay, all right. It's two of us and plus anybody who wants to join us. Who's chosen fasting? Uh, okay, it's a group of you, so why don't you focus yourself on Albert, okay, and the group, gather around Albert, all right. Who's doing, uh, what were the other ones, uh, silence, okay, who's quiet here, oh, a lot of silence, okay, so uh, why don't we gather around Chris for that one, okay, and I missed out, frugality, frugality. who's doing frugality, no one's frugal, oh, okay. <laughs> 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 Okay, maybe we'll, we'll skip that one for this week. All right. Is that all the right? Celebration. Who's doing celebration? Woo-hoo. Okay, celebrating people can be with Chris. Okay. Yeah. All right, so gather around your relevant person and let's have 10 minutes. Actually, not necessarily. We talked about the difference between celebrating with emotion and celebrating because it's a discipline. Yeah. And that sometimes you have to be celebratory, even if you're not necessarily feeling just... Organically joyful. Organically joyful. There's a new phrase for it. that in How can you show that? Are you organically joyful today? Oh, yeah. I am very organically grateful today. <laughs> but if you read the Psalms, quite a lot of the praise that David or other psalmists give God are out of, out of a sense that they know God is worthy of it, but they not, may not be feeling it. Right. Like celebrating. Mm-hmm. So the Psalms can be very helpful with that. Mm-hmm. Excellent. Thank you very much. Anybody else want to show anything from our groups? The costs or the spiritual benefits of the spiritual discipline? Eh? Mm-hmm. Where's the confession group? Because <laughs> they are <laughs> the <best. It's> okay. <laughs> yeah. so The silence group is being silent. <laughs> we just practice very good. the discipline. Okay, sorry, I shouldn't have called off on you. I've been disturbing you. <laughs> Go ahead. Is for confession is we discussed. You know, it helps with your relationships. 
it helps you to stay humble, stay grounded, um, helps you to just know who you are yourself as a, as a person. Mm -hmm. yeah, um, obviously it comes at a cost because you know we're being vulnerable, we don't want to give up our security, we don't want to be seen as weak, we, you know, it's, um, and, and we said, especially amongst men, you tend to uh, have more of competition uh, of who's going to go and confess first. <laughs> well, you know, naturally, I don't know, you know, it just seems that like it takes longer for, for guys to start being open about themselves compared to women. Good. One more, maybe, if there is one. If not, that's fine. I'm going to wrap up. There's a competition between Albert and Mika. Yeah, okay, well, I, okay. <laughs> well, well, I'll just turn it to, towards me. Again. <laughs> yes, I think we... Was it humility? Was it yes, I, 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 I try to portray other people in better light. So. Well, I think uh, we, we talk about... Um, uh, fasting and uh, and um, kind of the benefits are fairly obvious. I think the cost is is, is giving up something that you generally like, mm -hmm. and whatever it is, um, it's it's difficult and and uh, but also it releases energy, time, mm -hmm. and and focuses on 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 God and other people rather than ourselves. And like Albert said, it's it's fasting. If you don't do it, it's, it, it's really about self-gratification. So you're basically focusing on me, myself, and mm -hmm. what I need or want or crave or just want to do at any given time, where it's, it, it is really selfish. Mm -hmm. and, and God doesn't want us to be selfish. And I think that's really the, kind of the bottom line of it, that once you understand that, um, it becomes all easier uh, we talked about also scripture, like James 1 says, that consider it pure joy mm -hmm. when you're facing trials of many kinds. And, and understanding that concept that actually I'm not that important and God gives me what I need and, and, and he puts desires on my heart rather than what I myself desire. And then, then I think that way we can live a much more fulfilled life, a more God-focused life. Thank you very much. Good. Well, uh not silent and yeah. Yeah. Go for it. Yeah, uh, what, what, one of the things we uh, realized of the benefit of silence is it's a moment that we would like to be in the presence of God, as in um, we want to keep away the distraction like music and every kind of noisy things. And um, it's more like thinking, thinking about God in prayer and thinking about you know, being God's presence at all mm -hmm. times. And um, the benefit also is self-discipline because you feel like you're in God's presence and mm -hmm. you can afford to just, you know, get to do things that God will not be happy about. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Super. Well, let me wrap up and then uh, we'll have some uh, fellowship, which is my spiritual discipline. So, <laughs> here we go. Um, just a, a couple of thoughts. Uh, wrapping up as we have done some sharing. Um, I'd encourage you to think about how you can record what you're learning. Because this is a very intentionally focused time on these spiritual disciplines that we may well, if you wish to continue them beyond August, of course, I mean, that's good. But I'd encourage you to think about how to record things. So what, what I've done is, every time I put a, a fellowship time, something fellowship in, in my diary with somebody, I put as a note in my diary afterwards, reflect, to remind me to reflect. And then I take out my phone, I have an app on here called Drafts, I record voice text into it, and then I send it to Evernote, a journal in Evernote, which I have in here, which then keeps it as a journal entry. And I ask myself the questions, uh, what, is, what do I think God has taught me? What, do, no, what have I learned about God from this time with this person? What have I learned about myself from this time with this person spiritually? And what might be a useful lesson for me sort of going forward? So I ask myself those three questions after I've spent some time with somebody. I'd encourage us all to have our own method. It would be a shame to, for God to be teaching us these things, but not to notice or not to note them down. So however you wish to do that, I'd encourage you to, to do that. I think that would be uh, a good thing to do. So we're going to pray in a second. Just a thought. 
if you also you want some more inspiration about, about all this, I'd suggest studying the Sermon on the Mount. Read through Matthew 5, 6, 7. Because when you read that through, you begin to realize that a lot of what Jesus is talking about is making spiritual disciplines a lifestyle. When he talks about prayer, he talks about fasting, he talks about all kinds of things in there, right? So that might be a passage worth doing some Bible study on uh, to, uh, to help settle these things in. I saw this today on a website. Uh, Mrs. Frugal Woods, as she calls herself, said this. Just a, this is going, was meant to be an inspiration for all of you that were doing frugality, but none of you are. So, but I offer it as an interesting quote, since it's on the slide. Frugality encourages you to discern what you want out of life and to eliminate the noisy, expensive, time-consuming distractions of what the media tells us we should do. And I think the principle behind that applies to all of the spiritual disciplines that we're engaged in, stripping away what the media, society, our upbringing, or even our inner voice tells us we ought to be doing.